Warm greetings from the Institute for Creation Research in Dallas, Texas. I'm Dr. Brian Thomas, and uh, our task and topic and privilege today is to investigate some of these fossils that my colleagues in the world of science suggest represent human ancestors. Um, and so we, we conducted a survey, a friend of mine did, of 20 year old, roughly 20 year olds say, asking, do you believe in evolution? Of course, 99 plus percent said yes. Second question, multiple choice, what led you to that conclusion basically? And more often, uh, most of them responded with um, human evolution, more than dinosaurs or natural selection or fossils or teaching on evolution, it was human evolution. And so this, this, what I call the fake parade of monkey turns into an ape, turns into a human, and we go from small to large. That whole icon is more persuasive in, in, um, in, in generating support for the idea that we came from apes and not from Adam. So when people open the Bibles and read Genesis and it says God created, not nature created, uh, God created Adam, not ape initially, um, in other words, we came from Adam, not apes. And uh, this happened um, over um, a recent time scale, not millions of years. Uh, boy, it just flies in the face of what we are taught and told about human origins and about origins in general. And so it's a big, it's a big stumbling block for many people to come to faith uh, in believing that God's word got it right we have to believe at least some of God's word got it right, the gospel part, in order for us to have a new relationship with God through the Lord Jesus Christ. So for those who do believe, uh, it's incumbent on us to sort of uh, massage the conversation uh, in a right direction. So I'm going to try to give you some equipment to do that today as we consider these fossils. Uh, just as a, uh, as, a, as a few notes of introduction, uh, my PhD is in paleobiochemistry, which uh, is, means I'm an expert in dinosaur proteins. So this is a little bit outside my technical realm of expertise, but I needed to know enough about human origins uh, to have confidence that I have the right answers and that I can believe the Bible and that science supports it. Uh, and so I spent years uh, investigating uh, various fossil um, uh, um, I guess, samples or examples. And I found several trends in my investigations. And I get to reveal at least one of those trends to you today. Uh, and it has to do with categories. The trend I found is that the same three categories capture all the supposed missing link fossils or what some call pre-human fossils or ape man fossils. It turns out that uh, the three categories capture all of them, and none of those three categories is friendly toward the evolutionary perspective. All of them are friendly toward the creationary or the biblical creation perspective. That's what I discovered. And so I did go from evolution to creation uh, personally as a result of uh, an honest evaluation and inspection of these different fossils. So let me just give you a snapshot of, of some of what I found uh, in that investigation, looking at these three categories. Uh, I gotta share my screen, see if I can do this techno stuff. So there we are, Adam, not apes, three categories. And so to look at these three categories, um, we, we wanna remember that it's really important. You know, Paul pinned the relevance of the gospel to the history that's found in Genesis. Paul the Apostle saying in 1 Corinthians, and so it is written, the first man Adam became a living being. The last Adam became a life-giving spirit. He's likening the reality of the last Adam, who is the Lord Jesus, to the reality of the first Adam, who was a type of the last Adam. And so if that's, I mean, that's why we have a skeptical Western world that says, well, wait a minute, this Jesus stuff is silly because we know science has proven we didn't come from Adam. So what do we say to that? And today we're gonna to try to give you some clues and directions to go with conversations. This is important. It's, um, it's, not, um, it's not a gospel issue directly, but it's a clarity of the gospel issue. And, it, and so it, um, 
So we need to be we need to be equipped, I think, with some kind of answers, uh, with folks who object to the gospel on the basis of this idea that science has proven that Adam was not in our past. Actually, science supports the idea that Adam was in our past. We're going to look at some of that science today. So um, it turns out that uh, no matter what example you have of fossil that fits into the three categories, we'll only have time to look at four. Uh, Ida, Lucy, Homo habilis, and Neanderthal, and then Homo um, sapiens, modern man. We won't look at that because you look in the mirror every day, uh, at least most of us do. Um, and so let's look at the first one, Ida. And when we do, as we go through each of these, I'll set up a tee, uh, golf tee with a golf ball, and I'll take my golf ball in my hand and push the golf ball down, uh, virtual, and then we'll all together say, tee it up like this. Ready? Tee it up. At that point, I'm going to talk about what the, uh, the mainstream scientists and um, news people say about this particular fossil, then we'll talk about the fossil, and then we get to knock it out. So I'll swing my golf club and together say, knock it out, ready? Knock it out. Can you hear yourselves? Are you participating? If so, A plus already. Okay, so let's tee it up with Ida. Came out in 2009 in the spring, and oh, they had this big National Geographic special showing that you know this new find is extraordinary it's a missing link in human evolution and it shows our connection with all the rest of the mammals says sir david attenborough and after all he wears a white lab coat and has a great accent so he can't be wrong the guy promoting it uh Hiram, he says this will be pictured in textbooks for the next hundred years well this is what he found this is a fossil they're just showing part of it down there it turns out that the unique leg construction of this fossil resembles the unique leg construction of an animal still alive today called a lemur. So other scientists looked at the fossil, compared it to lemurs and said, uh, it's a dead lemur. So they don't stand to gain fame, funding and fortune from promoting a fossil. So they're free to say, no, it's not a missing link. So that same fall, so that fall that same year, they came out and uh, they didn't have a National Geographic special promoting their refutation of Ida as a missing link, but nevertheless, they refuted Ida as a missing link. So we get to knock it out. In fact, we don't have to do it. We don't have to get a PhD in paleoanthropology to knock it out. We just let them do it themselves because it turns out, here's another trend I found for every evolutionary proponent who says, says this fossil represents uh, a, a human ancestor. Uh, there's another evolutionist who says, no, it doesn't. So that's certainly the case uh, with, with Ida. So that's the first example. And it gives us our first category. It fits into our first category, which is just animal, like ape, like dead ape. So this is a dead animal. So because there's a dead animal in the ground, uh, does that mean that uh, Adam wasn't real? Pfft, no. Uh, there's a dead animal. So what? Uh, animals die. Uh, death has been part of the, the curse, the enemy, you know, of creation since Genesis chapter three. And uh, so death is part of the picture here. It's not a it's not a permanent part of the picture. It's an intruder and God's going to erase it one day, according to the scripture. That's really good news. Well, let's look at our next example. Lucy. Lucy, very, very famous, probably the most famous. So we get to Tee it up. Here's what they said about Lucy in 1970, I think, six is when it was first published and described um, again in Natural, National Geographic. Um, <clears throat> Donald Johansson, he to this day says, this is, represents our human ancestry. We evolved from Lucy. It's the, he said originally and his colleagues that it had a lumbar curve. Uh, so that's that's the curve that only humans have. Apes have a C-shaped spine. Humans have an S-shaped spine because of that lumbar curve, lower uh, spine curve. Human-like pelvis, they said it had human-like knee, probably walked like a man. Human-like foot, um, as, are, were the, those are the claims that were made, okay? But let's look at the real Lucy. But to do that, we need to consider some actual anatomy, anatomical differences between humans and uh, apes, including uh, especially chimps. So these scientists have attached um, 
markers on the bodies of these two. And that way they can compare uh, what's going on when they walk. You see the chimp has hands for feet. It walks with a stiff back. Its knees point outward. Um, in contrast with the human, our knees point straight. We have a, a, a flexible spine so that as we take a left foot forward, your right shoulder goes forward so that your spine uh, winds up uh, like a spring every step. That's why we can do marathons and animals cannot. Uh, they're good at sprinting. Chimpanzees are good at tree climbing. So they have a stiff spine, not a flexible one. So when it takes a left foot forward, its left shoulder goes forward. So it's a very stiff, rigid uh, way of walking. Um, it's a knuckle walker, our chimps. And um, it, so it prefers to be on all fours and it's very stable in trees. So those are some differences. Now, what about Lucy? Which of these two categories best describes Lucy? Or is it really right in the middle between them? Well, the lumbar vertebrae that Lucy was supposed to have, you know, the fossil, the original one that, uh, that Donald Johansson described, there's no lumbar vertebrae there. <laughs> so this is really bad science, telling stories about um, body parts that don't even exist. I mean, science is supposed to be about fundamentally that which you can observe. There's nothing to observe. Uh, okay, the knee was found, the human, supposedly human knee, found deeper and hundreds of feet further away. So maybe it is a human knee, uh, you know, associated with the rest of these skeletal elements. Um, inappropriately. And then uh, it, Lucy had an ape-shaped inner ear. That's the organ of balance, which is oriented uh, so that the, the, in apes, it's oriented so that the, the head is looking like this because they have their spine attaches to the back of their skulls. In humans, it's oriented like, like this, our inner ear, so we can balance with our heads um, placed on top of the spine. So that's all integrated uh, in humans. But Lucy had an ape-like inner ear. Uh, the pelvis was probably adjusted um, because it's, you know, fragmented bits. And so they had to glue them together and they glued them together. Maybe some bias was involved in the final positioning that they decided to, to form those, uh, those pelvis parts into. And it had an ape-like big toe, which means Lucy had a uh, hands for feet. Now, subsequent fossils also showed it had a locking wrist mechanism, which knuckle walking apes have today. So Lucy was a knuckle walking ape with every part, every one of its eight parts, the legitimate parts, um, ape-like. So uh, some friends of ours built a display, anatomically accurate and correct of Lucy, wrapping it in fur like it may well have had and it looks like a, it looks like a chimp um, so it's perhaps an extinct kind of ape but anyway what is this you know it's an extinct ape uh, and take it from the evolutionary community not me um, I'm one of these crazy people who actually believes the Bible <laughs> I have a bias unlike them right so Lucy's kind would have walked um, bent knee a bent hip bent knee rather like a chimpanzee not like a human at all. And so we're gonna let uh, Lord Solly Zuckerman uh, um, conclude this for us. And we're going to knock it out. He's gonna knock it out by saying they are just apes. Well, if they're just apes, what do we have? We have a dead ape, which is another example of the same category, animal, another dead animal. So do I have to take scissors to the book of Genesis and cut out the parts that say Adam? Or do I have to take scissors to the rest of the books of the Bible? There's about a dozen that refer to Adam by name, including, including uh, Luke 3, which names Adam in the Lord Jesus's physical ancestry. Uh, okay, so nope, I don't have to do any of that. I can keep Adam in there because all we have here is a dead ape, not a transitional form, just an extinct ape. Uh, but you wouldn't know it if you went to the... Um, where was I? I took this picture at the Denver Museum of Natural History or Science or something like that uh, title. Anyway, it's the big museum in Denver. And I, I just thought, what are these eyes doing in their Lucy? And of course, they gave it a human spine, which it doesn't have. 
and they gave it human knees and hips, which it doesn't have. And they gave it human feet, like exactly human feet. We have a foot that that has an arch front uh, toe to heel and another arch, big toe to little toe. And so we have these spring loading feet that enable us to run long distances or walk all day. Uh, Lucy had hands for feet. They don't show any of that. And so that's just factually incorrect. But then they also have human eyeballs. Humans have, we have sclera or the whites of our eyes are visible. And we use that in, an, in a dimension of communication, interpersonal communication that no animal has. Even apes, they can't, I mean, they, if they're looking at you, their whole face orients to, toward uh, their focus of attention. Whereas I can turn my face, but still look with my eyes at you. And you can tell where I'm looking because you have software that um, interprets the positioning of my eyes within my skull and what that means to you. I can even, you know, roll my eyes. Oh, this professor is so boring. And so that's a uniquely human communication attribute. And they stuck it in this ape skull. Why? And so I don't have to go far. I just, I found a quote from the artist who did these. Here's some examples of his work. On the left, human skull with human eyes. Middle, human skull. Uh, these are based on fossils. And they, they did the art. <clears throat> they added hair. I, th I think they gave this gal too wide of a nose. I don't know any person who has a nose quite that wide. Um, and then on the far right, we have, oh, is my picture in the way? Maybe I'll move it. We have an actual gorilla. And uh, you can see the very little sclera or whites don't show. But then they put in this next to the right, um, that's based on a fossil, Gigantopithecus, I think. Um, anyway, he put human eyes in it. And so why? Do eyes fossilize? Well, here's what he said about it. He said, I wanted to get a human soul into this ape-like face to show evolution, basically. So we have evolution being promoted and propagated and propped up by artistry, by imagination, by storytelling, not by science. Didn't say the data demanded that I get a human soul into this ape-like face. It's nothing like that. It was just uh, he wanted to. So that brings us to homo, <clears throat> excuse me, homo habilis. Mm. Let's see it up. So here I am holding the, a, a replica of the famous skull, KNMER 1470, Kenya National Museum. And it's just a small uh, human, but um, stories came out about this early on. So we have um, ape skull, in 1959 discovered and published in um, 64 in Nature, here's what they found was ape skull fragments mixed with stone tools. Now humans make tools uh, like this, not apes. So therefore they concluded, uh, did Mary Leakey, the lead author in this, that these apes must have been smart enough to make tools. Well, that's a conclusion, but the data don't demand that conclusion. What's another conclusion you could draw from the same data? That is a mixture of stone tools, human tools, man-made tools with ape body parts. Well, have you ever gotten really hungry? Hungry enough to eat an ape? Uh, that might explain why you have that mixture. Found in Olduvai Gorge, in the famous uh, uh, gorge in, in Africa and Tanzania. This is the only candidate, this is it. If, if we don't have Homo habilis, then all we have is apes clearly and humans, clearly humans. So you gotta have something in between. And it turns out that the only aspect of Homo habilis that's in between is the imagined um, uh, intelligence that it had. Uh, but it, it was just an ape uh, with humans separately mixed in. And it turns out that same Olduvai human one, Olduvai gorge um, it yielded a fully human skeleton. There's a photo of it, but paleoanthropologists to this day, don't even talk about it. Uh, discovered 1913 was the first fossil that they did discover in that region. And they've, they buried, they reburied it or, or they hid it and it's, they don't talk about it anymore, but it's fully human. And it's already way down there in those supposedly pre-human layers. We need to re advise, revise our thinking about these layers. We'll talk about those in a second, but anyway, it's down there in the supposedly Lucy layers. They're human layers. So we have, how can we have our ancestors in layers, 
beneath where their where their descendants supposedly evolved to if the descendants were already down there in the ancestors layers so the data don't support the evolutionary um, concept of uh, ancestors in layers below descendants in layers above instead we have humans above and below we have lucy and other apes below and above it's all big mix but each one is a separately created kind humankind separate from ape kind well don't take my word for it but we get to uh start to knock it out of the park by letting them say why they disagree with their colleagues um Hamel Habilis is just a conflation, not a real thing. It's just a confusion between um, ape parts and human parts. Uh, it's not even a sound species. And so let's knock it out with Ian Tattersall and Jeffrey Schwartz back in 2001 when they said Homo habilis is a all-embracing wastebasket species that most don't even use anymore, into which a whole variety of fossils can be swept uh, for convenience, but not for not for any scientific reason. Okay, so that brings us, that's our first example of a second category that I found that these can fit into. It's a mix of animal and human parts. So what was the first category? Animal, like dead apes or dead monkeys. Uh, and now the next category is a mixture of parts, pretending that they belong together when they really don't. All right. Now that brings us to our third, wait, fourth example, Neanderthal man. And so we're going to tee it up. And certainly I'm looking at the pages of this time life book that I read when I was a kid in the 1970s. And I was taught this and I believed it, that I came from Neanderthal man who, uh, you know, beetle browed brute who dragged his woman behind him uh, by her toes, I guess. And so I, I saw it in the movies. And so I thought this, is, this must be where I came from, apes. Uh, only later did I learn that um, Neanderthal Genome, here in 2010, it was published, made the cover of uh, Science, the journal Science, uh, fully human. So we had already been saying that Neanderthals were fully human. So we published this article on our icr.org website. You can keep up with the latest science and how it supports creation biblical creation uh, by going to that website. Thousands of articles available for free, good source of information uh, for us. Yeah, human DNA. So they were fully human. Um, this photo I took of a, of a, of a Neanderthal man mock-up, and boy, it looks real, but it's like a rubber guy. And he's behind a glass wall, a glass box at the Field Museum in Chicago. And uh, uh, but if you just give him a haircut and some clothes, he'd walk around the streets of the city of Chicago, which is full of people from all over the world, and he would just fit right in. Put a suit on him, he's fine. Give him a shave, haircut. So let's knock it out. Was Neanderthal our ancestor? Nope, he was us. He married with moderns. So modern looking humans, Neanderthal looking humans buried in the same burial site. Um, they cooked their food, they made jewelry, they made uh, instruments, musical instruments, they buried their dead intentionally, only humans do that. And of course, the same, they have modern human DNA match. Okay, so that's the first example of many examples that fit into this third category, humans. Okay, people died, humans have died. Does that mean there was no Adam? Not at all. Just read on to Genesis chapter three, and it says, well, Adam, because you disobeyed and rebelled, there's gonna be death now. And so death entered the scene as an intruder. The Lord Jesus promises to do away with death. In fact, that's why he died and then defeated death by rising again from death's grave. And one day he's gonna ultimately crush death as the last enemy. Um, anyway, so, but because man's been dying doesn't mean that Adam didn't live. Um, in fact, it fits perfectly into the biblical uh, framework, doesn't it? Okay, so that's, those are our three categories. And um, what we've learned along the way is that uh, this, this icon of apes to man, small to large, showing evolution in lower rock layers on the left, more recent and upper rock layers on the right, something like that, 
That's not true at all. It's not accurate to the data. Instead, we might find human layers down and various apes, modern and extinct, in layers above. And it's a big mix mash. So, um, so that's what we found. And uh, that's just an icon. It's a story told, uh, it's just an illustration. So in this case, we have a whole discipline, a whole science, paleoanthropology, which is based on a story and not on actual data. So those are our three categories, dead animals. Here's some examples, Ida, Lucy. There's another Artipithecus ramidus uh, that came out, I think in 2010, uh, two uh, uh, came out in the journal Science, just a dead ape, okay? Animals mixed with human, Homo habilis, some of those examples, some Homo habilis are just fully human, but some are mixtures and confusions. Uh, Java man was just, uh, yeah, it was definitely a mix. Um, Dubois, Eugene Dubois, he hid evidence. But anyway, when, when after 30 years of having hidden it, um, other people got a hold of it and found it was a human uh, skull cap and an ape jaw, and they don't, or a orangutan jaw, they don't belong together, found on the island of Java. It was all a fabrication, Piltdown, down, fabrication. Um, and then, and then uh, cavemen, the whole idea of a caveman, you know what they were? men who lived in caves. Uh, if you were having to disperse from the Tower of Babel and pioneer new lands, and you hadn't yet had time to build a house, you would live in a cave too. And that's what they did. And they left some of their remains there as they traveled across the earth after the tower. Um, human, fully human, Neanderthal, Homo erectus, fully human. Um, those features that typify Neanderthal erectus and what they call archaic hominids or archaic homo, uh, those features we can still find in many people alive today. And we don't call them primitive. Um, they just have sloping foreheads and strong brow ridges. And some people have that even today. So they're just people. And then some people were and are really small. Think of the Hobbit nickname given to um, Homo floresiensis a fossil found in the island of Flores, Flores Island in uh, Indonesia. Anyway, just tiny people. Um, and like the actors today who are just over four feet tall who play the role of Hobbit in the Lord of the Rings movies. Anyway, so fully human all the way down. So those are the three categories, none of which is transitional, none of which is evolutionary. All these support Genesis concept of created according to kinds, not morphing in between kinds like evolution says, and of course, these support the concept of death being uh, with us for a time, and it's an enemy. And um, <clears throat> uh, that, that fits the, the creation model. Well, if you want to learn more, we have a book, Contested Bones. You can get it at store.icr.org and order that one up. It's, it's, uh, it is the best book, and it's up to date. It's 2019. It's got the latest fossils, and it's um, really well done. Uh, a little bit easier treatment would be uh, the Creation Basics and Beyond, which you can get digitally uh, at also store.icr.org. And that's got, I think, two chapters in it on uh, this topic and all kinds of chapters on all kinds of other origins topics, including what about the Ice Age? Uh, what about dinosaurs? Uh, what about evolution? And even Bible questions, like what about the gap theory? How do you how do you explain Genesis? Things like that, creation basics and beyond, perfect for college age students. And then families ought to have a guide to creation basics, which is fully illustrated, uh, same topics. Well, I hope this has been an encouragement to you. And I hope that you are able to take what you've learned, transform what you've learned into questions that you can ask your skeptical friends. For example, when they say, we came from Adam and science proved it, and therefore I don't believe in Genesis and therefore I won't trust Jesus. We can ask them, what science, what science has proved that there is no Adam? I, I'm willing to learn. Please show it to me. And in the process of them trying to show you why they believe what they believe, maybe they'll have a journey like I had where I was challenged in my beliefs and finally realized, you know what, there's science to support biblical creation after all. I'm going to believe the Bible and I'm going to trust the Lord Jesus. And may we all be facilitators of that kind of uh, transformation and transaction. The Lord bless you. Thanks. Goodbye.